Hello there. Today I thought I would talk to you about five books which I think have changed the way that I read or my reading style. Um, and I actually think I might make this into a bit of a series. Um, nothing major, but there are a few sort of books that have changed dot 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 videos that I could do. So I might make that a thing. Um, but anyway, yeah, I wanted to talk to you about the books that have really shaped my reading style and impacted or changed my tastes um, because I think it's quite interesting how our tastes change over time and I can definitely pinpoint the pivotal books that have made those changes for me um, so I think it'd be interesting to talk to you guys about them so straight into it the first one is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald um, this is probably one of the first books I read where I really really appreciated the writing and I think F. Scott Fitzgerald in general is a writer who very much taught me that it doesn't have to be all about plot his plots are not his strong point, in fact, so much so that all of his books follow the general same idea. Um, but it doesn't matter because his writing is just phenomenal. Um, so he's the first person where I really highlighted on the writing and it didn't matter to me that the plots weren't necessarily my cup of tea or weren't necessarily that different from each other. So he's definitely a writer that stands out for me when I think of people who have really altered my style because up until that point I think my focus was very much on plot and I liked a sort of nice coming together story um, whereas with this one that was not what it was about at all for me it was all about the language used then I got Carson McCullough's The Heart as a Lonely Hunter now when I think of books that have shaped my reading style this one is the main one that I can highlight um, it was the first kind of southern American classic that I had really experienced um, and I just loved it. I mean, Carson McCullers in herself is a phenomenal, phenomenal writer. Um, again, she's very much about the language rather than the plot, which you'll find with a lot of these stories, actually. Um, but it, that's not even her strong point. Her strong point is the way that she can really get under people's skin. Um, she just has this way of putting the human experience and human suffering into words that just I'd never experienced before. Um, and as I say, because it was the first sort of classic Southern American book that I'd read, it really put me on a Southern American kick. And though I had suspected it before, it also made me realise that I really like depressing books, I guess. Books that deal with important big issues that aren't necessarily happy and that don't necessarily have a happy ending. As I say, human suffering. Books that deal with human suffering and which do it really, really well. I think there's nothing better than a writer who can really get to the bottom of just that feeling of being human and that misery that I think a lot of people feel it a lot of the time. And oh, so good. So, so good. Then, along the same vein, we've got John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. Now, this was not the first John Steinbeck that really had an impact on me, but it's definitely the one that had the most impact on me. Um, so I think it's only fair to talk about this, but also I read East of Eden not long after I read The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. But again, this is a sort of American classic where you really look at the suffering of people. It's just language that really gets to the bottom of things and really shakes you to the core. It does. Um, there's a quote on the back of this that says... I've done my damnedest to rip a reader's nerves to rags. I don't want him satisfied, um, which I feel like I quote a lot. But I think that is kind of my writer goal. I don't, I don't like books that leave you satisfied. I like books that make you question yourself and question how society is. Um, even though it's a classic, it's still very relevant, I think. And oh, it's just oh, so good. And again, it definitely shaped the kind of books that I look out for. Then we're on to more contemporary novels. So first we've got The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake by Amy Bender. Um, this was an absolute favourite when I read it. I actually reread it the year before last and because it had only been about a year since I've read it, I think I kind of shouldn't have picked it up again. And also because I had experienced much more books of this kind by that point, it didn't quite have the same impact on me. But this was the first magical realism book that I read that I really, really enjoyed. Um, up to then, magical realism was an absolute no-go for me. I hadn't necessarily consumed any magical realism other than um, The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman, which, even though it's classified as magical realism, I wouldn't particularly say it's magical realism. Um, I think it's much more fantastical. Um, and I also read The Drowning of Arthur Braxton by Caroline Smales, which I really didn't like. I just could not get behind it. I thought it was ridiculous. I was just 
I just couldn't understand why anyone would take something like that seriously. I was like, magical realism and me do not get on, I just think it's ludicrous. Um, and then I read this and I think when done well, magical realism is not ludicrous at all. It is fantastic and again, it kind of helps you get to the bottom of the human experience through kind of metaphors and I just, I love it, I love it. This also inspired me to start writing magical realism um, in my short stories which is something that I really enjoy doing and to be honest most of my stories are on the magical realist side these days um, so you know this story had a real real big impact on me and it it allowed me to pick up magical realism without thinking that I was going to hate it um, and actually some of my favourite short story collections especially are magical realism now and that's all because of this book then, and I'm sure most of you knew this was coming, we've got If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things by John McGregor. This was the first really, really literary book that I read. Um, up until then, I had been picking up literary things. I think I read this after I read all of those other books that I've mentioned. And all of those are quite literary. Um, but they kind of fit into different genres as well. And their literary -ness is not necessarily their main sort of categorisation. Um, they have other things going for them and they're a bit more plot based. Whereas this was absolutely just literary fiction. Um, which I had been avoiding because I thought that I wouldn't like it. Um, I loved it. I just adore this book. This book is the one. Um, it'd be interesting if I read it now. I think I might have the same experience I had when I reread The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake. Um, so I'm avoiding reading it again. Though one day I think I will pick this up again, possibly this year, um, because it just had such an impact on me. It was just one of those books where I finished it, shut it, and was just like, oh my god, like that, what just happened? And I would very much say that thanks to this book, my tastes are completely literary now. Um, yeah, I pretty much predominantly pick up literary fiction. Thanks to this, I found writers like Ali Smith, um, Jeanette Winterson. I just, yeah, it just started something in me. Um, and I'd say, even though The Heart of the Lonely Hunter, I think, definitely shaped my tastes because it kind of started me on that literary path. And I think that book probably led me to this one. Um, but this one definitely found me my genre I think, it found me my genre and it found me my path in the reading way. Um, so those are all the books that I was going to speak to you about today. Um, please let me know down below what books have sort of shaped your reading journey. I think it would be a really interesting thing to find out about people's different experiences and I will see you next time. Bye!